In 2014, Panasonic and Tesla signed an agreement for the original Gigafactory. By the end of 2019, Panasonic had 3,000 US workers and 200 Japanese technicians at that Gigafactory. They're able to pump out 30 gigawatt hours of batteries on that equipment over 13 assembly lines. With Tesla opening up Giga Texas, more Panasonic batteries are needed more than ever. So here we are in mid-2022. Panasonic has just announced its massive battery plant in Kansas to supply Tesla's probably the number one. But you'd be surprised how logistically set up this plant will be for Toyota as well. So we'll break down this press release here and make sure to stay till the end because we're going to talk about Tesla and Toyota's other big battery manufacturer from China, that is CATL, and how they're eyeing America to build batteries here. And their battery technology is insane, by the way. So here we are. Panasonic Energy in Kansas partnered to advance plans for U.S.-based EV battery facility. And very different compared to the press release by Panasonic and Tesla um, in 2014. This new press release doesn't say Tesla at all. So you know this battery plant is not exclusive to Tesla like the one inside Gigafactory in Nevada. Panasonic Energy plans to develop the project at a property in Kansas, which is expected to drive significant economic activity and opportunities for the local economy and could create up to 4,000 new jobs and result in an investment of approximately $4 billion. The company has identified a site in DeSoto, Kansas for this potential project. Now, it's a potential project because this is still pending approval by Panasonic Holdings Corporation Board of Directors. So I would assume that this is going to be OK and all this is going to be pie in the sky for them to continue to build this plant in DeSoto, Kansas. Panasonic Energy CEO Tadanobu says, with the increased electrification of the automotive market, expanding battery production in the U.S. is critical to help meet demand. Given our leading technology and depth of experience, we aim to continue driving growth of the lithium ion battery industry and accelerating towards a net zero emissions future. The announcement comes five years after Panasonic Group began production of lithium ion batteries of the Panasonic Energy North America in Sparks, Nevada. Pina is now one of the world's largest lithium ion battery factories, surpassing 6 billion EV battery cells shipped. While Pina's operation in Sparks, Nevada will continue, the new facility in Kansas is intended to further support Panasonic's long-term commitment to advancing the EV industry in the U.S. So what I did is I pulled up Google Maps, and this is the location of the new battery plant in DeSoto, Kansas. A really small town, around 6,000 people, but it's right outside the metro area for Kansas City, Kansas, and the suburbs. It's also kind of located between Kansas City and Lawrence, Kansas, where you know the University of Kansas is Rock Chalk Jayhawks, right? If this plant was supplying only Tesla, you would think it would be way down in Texas, next to Giga Texas in Austin, right? But it's not strategically located in the Midwest, right in the center of the country to supply as many uh, factories as possible. The furthest plants away from this, which could get these batteries, who knows, but down here in Guanajuato plant where they build the Toyota Tacoma, they also build the Tacoma over here at the Baja Mexico plant. So that's the furthest these batteries would have to travel in theory. Who knows if they would still be getting them from Japan. I mean, if this one could easily still get those batteries from Japan to ship them over the ocean, but that's a very long ways for a battery pack to travel even compared to what we have in Kansas, right? It's much shorter distance, even though it's on land versus water. Now, on the far right of the map, we have Toyota's upcoming new battery plant, which is around a billion dollar investment. So a quarter the size of this Panasonic factory, but it should also be supplying what we have right here. All right, so the plants that should be getting allocation outside of the Gigafactory in Austin for Tesla, I think Toyota should be getting uh, precedence in these factories in Canada, the Ontario plant and the West Ontario plant. They build Lexus vehicles there. The NX and the RX are built there. And I would suspect that these Panasonic batteries would be going there, not only for uh, fully battery electric vehicles at some point, but also for plug-in hybrids and just standard hybrids as well. Now, if we go to Kentucky, the largest Toyota plant in the world, uh, just outside of Lexington, Kentucky, and Georgetown. They produce a ton of hybrids here, so it would be a no-brainer not only for batteries to come from this North Carolina plant, but also this Kansas Panasonic plant. The Corolla is produced down here in Mississippi, but the problem with the Corolla is that there's no hybrid production in North America for the 
hybrid Corolla. They all come from Japan, which is really, really nice. But in terms of logistics, if we can build them here, you might as well do that. So we just need the battery supply either from North Carolina or from Kansas for those Corollas. And then this other plant right here, this is in Princeton, Indiana. They're gonna need a lot of batteries in this factory. The all hybrid Sienna is made here. We also have the hybrid Highlander here uh, produced there. We also have the upcoming Grand Highlander and Lexus TX. And the powertrains I'm hearing for the TX, of course, involve a hybrid and a plug-in hybrid. So they're gonna need a lot of batteries as well, either from Kansas or North Carolina. Keep in mind, Toyota has two joint ventures with Panasonic already. One was just established about a year ago, and the other one that they've had, it seems like, for decades that produced the original Prius batteries, and of course, they still produce batteries today. You know, a lot of the people who are just uninformed out there that like to hate on Toyota for their lack of batteries, their lack of advancement in EVs. Guys, they, they are playing chess behind the scenes. They typically don't communicate things unless they feel like they need to. I mean, yes, they just surprised us with a whole lineup of crowns, but in terms of their manufacturing processes and their business partnerships with battery manufacturers, Toyota will be just fine in their pursuit of producing three and a half million BEVs by 2030 alongside of all their hybrids and whatnot. So Toyota will be just fine in ramping up hybrid EV production here stateside, no problem with two brand new battery factories. So I think it's safe to say that they'll be producing the 4680 uh, cylindrical cells for Tesla there, but Toyota doesn't use cylindrical cells. So, so we'll probably see the prismatic cells for the Toyota vehicles. Okay, heading over to Reuters, exclusive Tesla supplier, Panasonic, eyes 20% jump and battery density. When I first read this, I thought it said exclusive Tesla supplier, Panasonic. No, it just means they have an exclusive article here saying that Tesla supplier, etc. Panasonic supplies Tesla, Toyota, maybe Subaru in some instances with their like plug-in hybrid of, of their Crosstrek, for example. Panasonic's working on technology to increase battery energy density by a fifth by 2030. So that's just at the cell level. The pack level, the 4680 is a big jump versus the previous cells for Tesla anyways, but they're still actually behind CATL. So it's cool that, that Panasonic will have 20% energy boost. They, they need to for EVs to take off, but we're gonna head over to Clean Technica. They're talking about the CATL Chilin battery with a thousand kilometer range coming in 2023. Well, but that's not the EPA cycle. So when you convert that to miles, by the time it gets here state side, we're probably talking 400 to 450 miles would be my guess, which is still a ton of range. So this new battery pack seems to be absolutely insane. They're claiming it has 13% more energy density than Tesla's 4680 cells. Just a few years ago in 2019, CATL introduced its cell to pack technology to the world with a volume efficiency of 55%, which was world leading then. And this new Chilin battery boasts a volume efficiency of 72%, is to have an energy density of 255 watt hours per kilogram, which is 13% higher energy density than the 4680 cells, which Panasonic and Tesla have. This new design supports a fast hot start in five minutes and charging to 80% in 10 minutes. In hot conditions, the cells can be cooled down rapidly, effectively blocking abnormal heat transfer between cells and reducing the chance of fires. These packs are coming online in 2023, and there's no official word on which companies are gonna be getting these new battery packs from CATL. But if we go over to another article by Clean Technica, CATL plans $5 billion battery factory in North America but it has not been finalized yet. So this is really crazy and good news, not only for Tesla, who uses Panasonic and CATL batteries, but Toyota as well, who uses Panasonic, CATL, and BYD batteries. Don't forget, BYD is the second largest Chinese battery manufacturer. They're, I think they're, they have passed Tesla in China for the most uh, battery electric vehicles sold there, and they really pride themselves on not using nickel or cobalt in their batteries, BYD, but they use the blade batteries, the LFP or the lithium ion phosphate, which are a lot cheaper. They don't blow up. They're a lot safer, but they just have reduced range. So CATL also supplies Tesla with these lithium iron, iron phosphate batteries, but they're not quite as good, in my opinion, as the BYD blade battery cells. But back to this plant in North America, five billion dollars and then it's rumored to have 80 gigawatt hour capacity if we look at gigafactory nevada that capacity is around 25 to 30 so this is about three times more than gigafactory 
Nevada, but it probably is going to be pretty close to that new Panasonic plant in Kansas as well. And this new plant would employ 10,000 people. And the batteries manufactured in North America will use both NMC, which is the nickel manganese cobalt batteries, and also the LFP, the lithium iron phosphate batteries. CATL already has a production capacity in China of 145 gigawatt hours. And the company has announced plans to build another 579 gigawatt hours capacity by 2026. So yes, they have to open a huge plant in North America to get to that massive 579 gigawatt hours. The auto industry continues to evolve, continues to change. More battery electric vehicles will be produced here in stateside than probably thought possible, not only with Panasonic and CATL opening shop here and bigger uh, production lines and, and new factories. You also have all the Koreans coming in. You have GM with Ultium platform with LG. You have SK, which is, I think, teaming up with BMW and Ford. Uh, you have CATL, like I already mentioned. You also have Samsung that will be building batteries here in North America as well. So. All these Asian battery makers are setting up shop in North America, which is a good thing, right? In theory, that reduces pollution to send batteries across the oceans, but it also will ramp up EV production capacity here in the States a lot faster, employ more people here stateside, which is a good thing. So also in theory, it reduces our dependence on China or in Chinese made batteries. Even though CTL is a Chinese company, if they're producing batteries here, in North America, that's going to sit a lot better <clears throat> with the American consumer than the Chinese batteries being exported from China into America. But I'm going to end it there. What are your thoughts about all this battery madness going on? Panasonic definitely leading today's news, but definitely stay tuned because when CATL makes an official announcement to open up a battery plant to supply Tesla and Toyota and other manufacturers, I'll be giving that to you guys as well. If you made it this far in the video, haven't subscribed. I would appreciate that. Hit the like button as well. Also, special thanks to my paying members. You guys rock. Much appreciated. I'm going to end it there. Have a great day. Take care of yourselves and peace out. <music>